Hi there, Andre here from Peak Motorcycles. It's been a while since I've done a things on a table video, don't have a better name for it yet. Um, but this is really just looking at some gear that I'm not gonna fit to a bike because it could go on any bike really. What I'm looking at today is these Enduristan Monso Even Evo Panniers. Now this is a small and a large uh, because on the two bikes that I'm likely to use these on, my 1250 GS and also on my CRF 300 Rally, uh, one side has the exhaust and the other doesn't, so you can actually have a wider bag on the non-exhaust side. The metal boxes I have for my GS are exactly the same, um, and the fact that they sell these individually means that you can mix and match. So you could have two 34s if you wanted it, you could have a 24 and a 34, you know, whatever you fancy really. If you've seen my other video, you'll know that I've also got the Enduristan Blizzard panniers, and I think those are really good if you're just going to be trail riding. You want something that is minimum weight, uh, will go really well when you're riding standing and you can ride off-road. And if you're doing a trail trip, I think those are perfect. What I did find is they are limited in size, and that, that's on purpose. I originally had the XLs, which are actually 34 litres, and I actually switched that down to the largest, which are 24 litres. What I did find was that actually you can fit a bit more into them because of the roll tops, but equally, uh, with these you can fit more, a bit more in as well. And I've got a few events coming up next year where I'm going to be travelling to them by road. Uh, where actually having the extra capacity and the ability to store things uh, on a pannier rack with these would be useful. And then when I get there I'm going to be trail riding so I can take them off. It'll, you know, There's more than enough space to put all my camping gear, my food, my beer, anything else that I need to take with me when I get there. So a few things with these. So I, I don't think that these are really a competing product for some of the uh, more economically priced panniers. You, know, you can get some perfectly good waterproof panniers out there um, for not, not a lot of money. Uh, you can use dry bags if it's for occasional use. Um, these are definitely at the, the higher end of the market. They're definitely a premium product and I'll go through some of the things in detail so you can see it. Uh, but they are priced accordingly. So the small one will set you back uh, as of November 2021 in the UK about £312 and then it's about £20 more for the large. So these are definitely not at the cheap end of the market, definitely not. But it depends what you're comparing them with. You know, if you're comparing them to the metal boxes that a lot of manufacturers sell with adventure bikes where you're paying several hundred pounds, then they become quite competitive. I think they're about a third less than the price of the BMW boxes if you get those. And they are light, they are a lot lighter than the hard luggage. To give you an idea of how light they are, uh, the small one is about 2.5 just over 2.5 kilos, uh, and the larger one is about 200 grams more at 2.75 kilos. So between the two of them, about four and a half kilos total. Uh, it might not sound like a lot, but for a weight comparison, my SW Motec Trax Evo panniers that I currently use on my GS weigh in at more than five kilos, or I think the smaller one is, is about five kilos and the bigger one is about five and a half kilos. So you're saving five kilos of weight on the bike, sort of right off the bat. Um, now, in some cases, the extra five kilos is worth it for the convenience of the metal boxes, and I think that they definitely do have a place. Uh, you know, I quite like the fact that I can put my uh, overnight bag in just in one of the boxes uh, when I'm on tour, keep the other one just for things I need on the road, like you know, locks and a compressor, my tools, waterproofs, spare gloves, those sorts of things. Uh, however, with the trips I'm looking to do with these, I'm never really going to be away from the bike unless I'm actually camping and I've got my stuff set up. And also for particularly using them on the CRF 300, where weight is much more of a consideration than, than it is on the GS. You know, if you can save five kilos just on the, the bags themselves, you know, that, that's a fair amount of weight high up on the bike. That's kind of my reasoning behind it. If you're wondering why on earth has he got another lot of luggage? Uh, but what I'll do is I'll show you what these are like, try and give you some, a close-up look to see exactly how they go together, why I think these are particularly good, and also the how they fix to the bike. Because one thing uh, I do find is, especially if you're having lots of long days when you're on a tour, the less effort it is to take the bags on and off the bike at the end of the day, uh, you know, the cleaner it is to do that, it just makes life a little bit easier. And I think that the way that these attach to pannier frames is really convenient. Okay, so first up, um, I'm going to unpack one of these. So this is the small one. They are both essentially the same. They come wrapped up with this little bit around it, which is what actually gives it the definition inside the bag. I think I can take those up. They won't be going back. Um, and within here, if I push that open so you can see inside, it's very similar to the other uh, Endura stand luggage and it's got this red this red lining. It's very easy to find things in there It's got this firm metal strip along the top for rolling it down And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this piece and I'm just going to put it inside to give it the shape So essentially on this bit of plastic, there's three bits of velcro. There's one on the end here uh, There's one in the middle bottom and there's one uh, on the side here And that actually will go into the pannier and the three of these will attach onto the, the velcro tabs inside the, the pannier Yeah, 
Yeah, this is a bit harder than I thought it would be. What I think I'm gonna do, what I tried to do, even though you couldn't quite see it on the camera, was I tried to get one of these on, but I think because how it's been uh, arranged for transit means that the bend is actually now in the slightly wrong place. Uh, this stuff is quite flexible, uh, but I think I actually need to probably get the middle one on first. So I'm gonna do that and then try and push the edges down. Uh, it's hard to show on the camera, so just bear with me. So there we go. Uh, took me a while to get it in, but you only have to do it once. Uh, and if you can just about see that on that camera, uh, then hopefully you can see exactly how that is inside. I'm just gonna show you rolling it up. I'm sure everyone's seen this already, so it'll be really quick. It's, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can either uh, leave it wide, fold it over, just roll it down like that, and then use the, the side ones to pull it down. If you want it to be really waterproof, although I think it does restrict the space very slightly, you just fold those in, little tab over the top, roll that up, and then straps on. So it's got straps at the side which hold it down. And there's also these straps on the top, which are a little bit longer, uh, which go in place. Um, it seems a bit odd having two, perhaps, but what, you, what it means you can do is you've still got these straps on the top to secure something on top of it. It's got these extra loops uh, there as well. If you want to use those, it's got extra loops on the front. So if you've got extra things to attach to it, whether that be camping gear or anything else, then it's certainly easy to do that. It's got a couple of loops for a shoulder strap on the back there, and also some extra straps for going over the top. So these would be on either side if you have anything going over your seat that you need to strap down. Uh, looking at the edges, uh, it's got these compression straps uh, just for pulling it in as close to the bike as you can. Has some extra loops on there as well. So if you've got the water bottle carrier, uh, a fuel carrier, or even the one that was my fender pack, which I ended up putting on my Blizzard panniers will also go on the side. So you can expand um, the storage space on there if required. Um, just looking at the bottom of them, I don't know if you can see, but there's this heavy sort of PVC uh, or some sort of very hard plastic uh, layer that's along the bottom here. Um, this is also um, bonded uh, to the panniers themselves. So I think that would be both waterproof and give you some abrasion resistance. What you don't want to do is fall off and tear these. I mentioned before that a differentiator with these sometimes is how easy they are and off to get off the bike. Now, the way that these fit, I don't know if you can see this under here, and at the moment that would be in the locked position. If I pull the tape on the other side, that just pulls up. So that's when you can actually hook it over. And then to secure it, it's as simple as just pulling that down and then putting one of these pins in from the side, like that. Exactly the same uh, on this side. So I'll pull the pin out, just pull that down, and that moves very easily on there, and then just pop the pin back in. Now you could put these in from the inside uh, for extra security, I suppose, or from the outside. You can actually get a padlock that will go through here if you want to lock them to the bike. And it's basically going to make the, the rail is going to go in there and then that is going to be fixed really solidly. Now, further up, what we have is, where are they? Here we go, is we just have this webbing um, and some some buckles just to secure that on. So you do still have to put these on, but that is essentially it. It would be just to put these around the upper part of your pannier rack. Um, same on the other side. Let's move that around. Uh, same on the other side. So we've just got this locking, this locking cam in there. Now, most of the weight is actually going to be borne by these lower ones because this is going to be you know, resting uh, on the top of the, of the rack itself. So these are really there just to hold it up. Um, I think as a means of attaching panniers, it's really elegant. You know, there's some others that I've seen that need a special mounting plate or which have a lot of straps that you need to put on to make it, to make it secure. Whereas this just seems really easy, two straps at the top on and off, pull the pins out and you can just take it off the bike really, really easily. There's also, it means there's nothing um, hanging loose, low down. You know, if you've got straps that could, could come off the bottom, could get in the chain or could catch on something. So yeah, overall, I think that's, yeah, it's just a really nice design. Right, next thing I'm gonna do is do exactly the same for the large pannier. Um, it's no different, it's just large. So same sort of thing, uh, this big sort of plastic bit that's gonna give it its shape. You can take that off. And this one really is quite cavernous inside here. Uh, I know it says it's just 34 liters, but I compare this to how big the blizzard panniers are, this really does look enormous. Right, I'll just push that out. I'll do this bit quick. This one seems to be a whole lot easier. So there we go. That was, um, yeah, I think I clearly got something wrong when I did the other one. Maybe I'll cut that bit out of the video. Right, so same sort of thing for rolling it up. It's gonna roll that over 
side straps and the top straps. So that's kind of it. That is, uh, I'll show you them side on. That's what they're like side by side. So this is the bigger, this is the 34 litre, this is the 24 litre. Um, so yeah, I, I just think they're a really, they're a really nice luggage option. Um, they seem to be extremely hard wearing. Uh, they are soft bags, so they're not quite as secure perhaps as the metal ones. But honestly, I'm sure that most of the locks on the metal ones, if someone really wanted to get into them, um, a big screwdriver or even a hammer, you know, the locks wouldn't stand up to that much. And it's just how light they are. You know, the fact that these two bags together are five kilos and you're comparing that to metal boxes, then from a weight saving perspective, it is quite, quite compelling. They're, they're, they're quite easy to put things on the outside of. Um, they do cost quite a lot of money, but again, it depends what you're comparing them to. If you're currently using some more economical dry bags and they're just perfectly fine for you, then these probably aren't the bags for you. If you've been looking at some of the other premium offerings, um, I know that there's, there's certainly some that are available in the UK, which are, I guess, a similar sort of product, but they do require to have a mounting plate. So that's some additional messing around when you're putting them on and off, um, some additional costs, and also some additional weight that goes with it. So in conclusion, that's kind of it. These are the Enduristan Monsoon Evo panniers, 24 litre and a 34 litre. Uh, I'm gonna do a separate video for fitting them to both my GS and to my CRF 300, just because a lot of people are just interested in the panniers. Some people are interested with how they go on one bike or the other bike. Those will probably go out as Wednesday shorts, just because I don't think it'll take that long, um, but it'd be good just to show you how those fit. So just to give you a size comparison, this bag is the small one and it's 24 liters. And that one is the same size as both of mine Blizzard panniers combined. So these ones are 12 liters each. This one is 24 in one. On top of that, I've got another 34 liters. So while I think these are great, and for riding off-road and trail riding when you're going to need to be carrying your stuff and camping, I don't think you can do any better. I know there's similar products out there which are probably as good, but I think for how these fit the bike, you know, how the fact they don't get in the way when you're riding, you don't need racks, you don't need anything else, they are brilliant. Um, but the limitation is you've got 24 litres of luggage space. If you want to carry more stuff, you can always put it on high up bags, but it's raising the center of gravity of the bike, making it harder to ride. Comparing that with this, where it's 24 liters in the small one and 34, so this is as big as three of these. So it's essentially like having five of these uh, blizzard panniers uh, on the bike at one time. So there's definitely a, a massive increase in what you can carry. There is a downside. I know a lot of people really aren't keen on riding off road with pannier frames because they get in the way, they could be dangerous. Um, also, if you come off, even if the bags stand up to it, maybe the frames will, will, will bend. Uh, so yeah, there is a lot more that can go wrong if you come off off-road when you're using panniers like this. I don't think I'll be doing anything that extreme with it, but if you, if you want to look it up, um, I know that Lyndon Poskett has, has used these in anger, um, you know, had some inputs into the design. Uh, I'm not doing anything like races to places, but if you look up and see what that is, this is the sort of thing that these really are made for. So with that, I think that as a very lightweight, very hard wearing, waterproof, easy to take on and off luggage option for a bike. You really can't go wrong with these. They are expensive. Uh, I guess it's quite a niche market for them as well. But if you're looking for something which is bigger than the Blizzard panniers, you are doing a longer trip. If you're you know, going overland for a period of time, I, I think these are a really good option instead of a metal box. I've bought them now, so obviously I'm gonna say nice things about them. Uh, as I go through next year, I'm gonna be doing some longer trips on the CRF. Uh, I'll be definitely using these. Uh, so I'll give you another update on exactly how they're going uh, and what you know, what I found that works well with them, if there are any problems that I've found with them, but in particular about you know how, how capable they are for longer trips. I hope that's been interesting and useful. If it has, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.